thanks for joining. I'm very excited to be here uh, for presenting you Vitruvius, the first of a uh, family of risk y vector accelerator developed by BSC. I am Francesco Minervini. Uh, presenting here, my colleague Oscar Palomar will be active in the, in the chat for answering on the flight questions. So let's go to the first slide. This is the agenda of the presentation uh, with a short list of the point I will touch. We, we start with a general introduction about uh, our VPU. Then I will go through the motivation and goals that drove us to the implementation of it. There will be an overview of the micro architecture before we enter the evaluation phase. And finally, uh, I will conclude my presentation. OK, let's introduce the design. So uh, Vitruvius is one of the key uh, components of the European Processor Initiative, which is a project co-founded by the European Union that involves uh, 28 partners from different European countries um, and represent the first effort towards extra scale performance in Europe. Uh, the idea of this project is to build up a know-how on this type of architecture fully, Europe based, ba fully based on European um, key competence. And we have already achieved the first important milestone, which is the tape out in June 2021 in Global Foundry's um, 22 nanometers FDSOI technology. Here in this slide, we see um, a sample uh, of the layout of the, of the test chip. So we can see, for example, here, apart from different accelerators being represented, the four VPU micro tiles, each one uh, hosting one Vitruvius composed with uh, eight vector lanes. OK, let's go through the motivation and goals that drove us to the, to the uh, design of this, this vector unit. As said, uh, Vitruvius is part of a system on a chip with many accelerators. This means that. Um, there is a lim limited area budget for each one, plus uh, we wanted to uh, realize an energy efficient design, still uh, targeting long vector application as Vitruvius targets 256 double precision or 64 bit elements uh, with, let's say, the target frequency dictated by the EPI project, targeting one gigahertz in a 22 nanometer implementation. So why we decided to use RISC-5 for this? We use RISC V because we thought that this actually comes at the right time of a, of a new interest on uh, vector architecture as energy efficient high performance hardware. It also represents uh, a good, the leader alternative to costly non open source ISA, and additionally, its level of flexibility offers a uh, considerable de degree of customization for users. OK, after this uh, introduction, let's go to the microarchitecture overview. First of all, this is a list of the main features that the vector accelerator implements. As I said, it targets log vector. We will go through the list of this through the, uh, throughout all the other slides of the presentation. But let me just highlight, for example, that uh, for the time being, it implements version 0.7.1 of the RISC-5 vector extension. Uh, its char main characteristics are being a decoupable architecture and uh, implementing a lightweight out of order execution uh, mechanism. This is the block le level diagram of the VPU. We can see here uh, different of the main components. This block highlighted here is the point from which Vitruvius will receive instruction from the, from the Skylar uh, pipeline. Then we have the renaming logic, which is the core block that also boosts the uh, light effect of out of order execution mechanism together with the, uh, the, maximum, the maxing of instructions that are going to the corresponding queue, arithmetic and memory one. We can see on the top of here um, the memory units, which are the ones that basically are um, more involved in the communication with the Scala code with respect to the execution of memory operations. Then finally here we have um, the, the highlights with the single lane we, where we can see, for example, a slide of the slides of the register file, control blocks to orchestrate the movement and the execution of operations inside it, and the 
pipeline functional unit. Each vector lane can communicate with the others through an area efficient uh, and low power ring interconnect. Okay, so this is one of the main feature. The execution paradigm, as said, Vitruvius adopts uh, an hybrid in order out of order execution scheme in the sense that arithmetic instruction basically proceed in order while memory, memory instructions can execute out of order. Uh, as said, Vitruvius is at the double axel, oh, sorry. It's a decoupled accelerator, this means that um, it basically offloads vector instruction from the scalar pipelines. And as said, the only instructions, the only vector instruction that involves still a communication with the scalar core are the uh, memory operations. This is uh, possible through the implementation of the OBI or open vector interface that was developed as a joint effort in the instance of the UTPI project between BSC and Semidynamics, whose high-level overview is provided here. Okay, another important characteristic is that uh, our VPU is configurable. It means that being composed of a set of identical vector lanes, this can be actually configured with a uh, microarchitecture parameter. Each lane has its local FSM and a control unit that orchestrate the movement and the operation inside the lanes. Uh, the baseline configuration, the one that we taped out in the EPI project, is composed of uh, eight vector lanes connected through the area efficient in ring interconnect. The way the register, vector register are organized is an in using an interleaved manier across um, the eight deck vector lanes, each one holding five SRAM banks. And we also support register renaming, as said, uh, implementing 40 physical registers, so adding eight additional logic, uh, physical registers with respect to the ones presented by the uh, risc ISA. Some details about uh, the functional units that are implemented in each vector lane. So uh, Vitruvius adopts uh, SIMD style functional units. This means that uh, basically we can pack more operation inside uh, one 64 bit wide uh, um, functional unit. All functional units share three vector operand queues and a, a mask operand queue for predicated operations. We can divide the um, um, functional units into block, the ALU that supports all the integer arithmetic operations like addition, multiplication, and mask manipulation instructions. It supports all types of um, operands, vector, immediate, and scalar operands, different latency operations that also uh, can be configured in the, in the number of pipeline registers to use. And as I said, it executes uh, one, two, four, or eight operations uh, with respect to the standard element width to be used per cycle. The other block is the FPU. The FPU has been developed by the Faculty of Elect Electrical Engineering and Computing, Computer um, Architecture from Zagreb. It executes one double precision or two single precision operation per cycle. It's also fully pipeline with configurable number of pipeline registers and uh, it's faithful to the Berkeley soft load, soft load and IEEE 754 standards. Okay, this is one of the main uh, feature of our VPU, which we call instruction overlapping. This is important because it's actually um, the mechanism that enhance performance and allow Vitruvius to reach the peak performance that according to its microarchitecture amount to 16 double precision flops per cycle. In a certain way, this uh, optimization, it, this feature is not different from uh, standard pipeline techniques, but for the fact that as I will show, it's possible to execute um, different instructions in different vector lanes. So before we go through the um, timing diagram, it's important to do um, let's say give some uh, some uh, information about how we refer to instructions executed inside the VPU. We refer to an inbound instruction as an, an instruction that is currently reading its vector operands 
and an outbound instruction as an instruction that is that completed already the read of the operands and it's either executing or maybe already completed execution, but it's waiting for the results to be written back to the register file. So we can start from here. We can imagine that uh, instructions are granted, an album, an album being granted, they enter the instruction slots, instruction control slots here. For example, zero goes to A and one goes to B. They start being the inbound instructions uh, in the different vector lanes of the VPU, like here. So they start reading the overruns, right? In these cycles. So imagine that now you have the operational back vector length that is uh, such that, for example, lane seven has less elements than to process than the other lanes. This means that for lane seven, the inbound instruction that was previously uh, instruction one has already completed in this, uh, in this cycle the read of the operands and can already go to the outbound phase. When this happens, in the next cycle, this lane can already receive another instruction, instruction one in this case, as the new inbound instruction, and you see already the overlap, right? So in these cycles, you have instruction one being executed in lane seven, while other lanes are still busy with the previous instruction. So you basically already have here uh, different instructions being executed in the different vector lanes. Then the things uh, can move on at this moment. For example, it can happen that lane seven has already completed the read for instruction one and actually has both instruction be, being waiting for being written to the register file. And only at this time, the other lanes completes uh, the inbound phase for instruction zero. They can start with the next one. But lane seven at the meantime has already completed the write back of zero and be get ready for instruction one. So you see there is the overlap of instruction and which is even more evident here where you have uh, lane zero, to six, for example, completing the, still completing the uh, instruction one while the lane seven has already completed the instruction two. Okay, another important feature is the way Vitruvius handle reduction operations. We know this, these operations are critical in many uh, state-of-the-art processors. In our VPU, this involves uh, two phases. One is the local vector element reduction or intra-lane phase and global vector element reduction to process the final uh, result, which is the interlane phase. So Vitruvius supports all um, RISC-5 uh, reduction operations, both the ordered and the unordered uh, ways. And uh, this feature I'm going to, to show now is intended to be uh, boosting and enhancing the execution of unordered reductions uh, by using multiple accumulators. So this mechanism actually needs a final phase to reduce uh, the accumulators into single results. So let's imagine that we have uh, the pipeline functional unit here, and we have this set of uh, accumulators we are going to use for the execution of the operation. We receive in cycle zero, the first element of the vector register to be processed. We um, execute the first step of the reduction using the result already in the accumulator zero. Then we move on. In the next cycle, we select another of the accumulators while we have in the pipeline the execution of the previous operation. This one enters the pipeline and we uh, move on until we use all the accumulators in a round robin fashion. And we have in this uh, moment uh, results being processed inside here and we are already starting the next operation. So to give a more complete overview of um, these features, here we have some plots with respect to the benefits that we can get from it. So in the right side of the slide here, we have one plot that is showing the effect of uh, the overlapping feature uh, we um, implemented. So this is a feature that we could easily uh, disable just by setting some uh, configuration parameter. We can see here that uh, according to specific vector length values, which are beneficial for our architecture, we can actually, through the usage of overlapping, touch the ideal peak in terms of double precision flops per cycle, which is 16 by 
uh, the structure of our MARG architecture by using overlapping while being far from it in case overlapping is not implemented. On the right side is the effect of um, uh, the usage of multiple accumulators for reductions. We can see that also here the vector length, um, uh, when varying the vector length, of course, we have different results. And we can see that my, by using multiple accumulators, this is for a sequence of an order of an ordered reduction, we can get speed ups of uh, more than 60% in four cases, in some cases. Okay, then let's move on to the evaluation phase. Uh, so as said, for the context of the VI project, uh, Vitruvius was synthesized for global foundries 22 nanometers FDSOI. Uh, the frequency we used for the uh, standalone synthesis of 1.25 gigahertz. These are the parameters that we used for the synthesis setup. So we used the number of lanes equal to eight to match the EPI configuration. Uh, vector register file size, uh, number of banks, and so on and so forth. And the results we got from the synthesis are the ones shown here. So the area we got from these uh, runs is 1.1 square millimeter for the maximum achievable frequency of 1.4 gigahertz. Results reported for uh, synthesis using typical conditions. After the synthesis um, runs, we moved on to the patient route phase. So this is the overview of the layout we got from the physical design. It's possible here to distinguish the different lanes uh, of the um, VPU, plus some additional internal units like memory units uh, above here, part of the, let's say, the front end and the issue stage and the instances of the vector register file distributed for the eight lanes. On the left side, we have the area breakdown of the single lane. We can see that for the single lane, the most of, of the area is occupied by the uh, floating point unit, accounting for 40%. Second is the register file, almost 30% of the area. We used uh, several vectorized benchmark to characterize our vector unit. Of course, for the, for the analysis, we used problem sizes that were best fitting for, for our architecture. We can see that from this uh, table um, for uh, heavily computational uh, kernels, we can get good results with respect to the maximum achievable throughput. So this is the characterization we have shown Oh, sorry. And additionally, we have compared uh, our VPU with some commercial uh, non risc 5 vector units that was, were similar in terms of implemented features. For example, here we have the Sex Aurora VPU and the A64FS FX SBE VPU. Of course, these are um, implemented using different technology nodes. So uh, I understand complaints about um, uh, comparisons, but anyways, this is to show that we can get good results with respect to efficiency expressed as uh, double precision flops per square millimeter, as we see Vitruvius reached 22.4, which is uh, better, for example, than the Aurora uh, VPU. We also believe that maybe technology scaling and additional improvements can lead us to even better uh, results. Then concluding, I want to remark our contributions. Vitruvius is the only RISC-V vector processor, uh, vector accelerator that supports long vectors, 256 double precision elements. It's the first um, RISC-V vector processor compliant with the OVI specifications. And also we want to highlight that this work shows that actually we can um, design a long vector accelerator still um, uh, following an area efficient approach. We have, of course, future plans for our VPU. First of all, we want to upgrade to the latest release of the RISC-V vector extension. We are going to improve scalability and performance by refactoring the interlane interconnect. And also, we are moving, uh, looking forward to uh, targeting higher frequency by applying uh, more advanced technique like body biasing and or even moving to a more advanced technology node. Finally, this is 
uh, an acknowledgement to express our gratitude to all the uh, EPI partners that collaborate together to achieve this first important milestone. And that concludes my presentation. So thank you for attending. If you have any questions, I will be willing to fulfill your requests. Thanks. Okay. Do you have some questions in the app, which um, the preference is for everyone to put their questions into the app. Uh, how do you access the memory? through a high-speed burst based like AXI or cycle by cycle? Okay, so um, let's say that the memory accesses uh, are one of the most critical um, things here since I said this involved, this is a project that actually involved many partners, right? So um, the thing is that our BPU doesn't really control memory accesses. Uh, this is controlled by the scalar core that is in charge of, you know, generating the addresses, uh, communicating directly with the memory. The, what the VPU receives are just uh, elements in the form of a cache line that are then processed and distributed among the lanes. So um, this is one of the things that we know it's uh, important to, uh, to uh, upgrade and extend. We are working, as I said, on other uh, versions of the VPU that are also uh, involving uh, more advanced memory access, yes. Okay, next question is, how many ports does your vector register file have? Okay, yes. I also think I have a slide for it. Yes, so I was kind of expecting questions with respect to the register file because uh, first of all, um, this was, si since uh, our uh, architecture involve long vectors, this is one of the most critical parts, right? As we also saw um, in, the, in the area results, vector register file was critical. So we made an analysis. Our vector register file so far supports only one single port. So you have five SRAM banks uh, with only one port. Um, because we, we saw that from the initial evaluation, this was giving us the good trade-off between the area uh, these instances were getting and the access time to it. So that's the reason why we use the single port SRAMs. Five is an upward number, I know, because it's not a power of two. So this kind of complicates the things uh, when you access vector elements and so on and so forth. But um, this was the minimum, minimum number of banks required in order to support um, the throughput of one double precision FMA per cycle uh, orchestrated through the, through the uh, states that you can see here in this slide. Um, and this was the good trade-off between the area we could get from it and the access time. So that's the reason why we use single port banks. And a number of questions in here, so I'll get as many as I can. Uh, what is the latency of memory access and what does the processor do while the vector is being fetched? Okay, so again, this is uh, something that the VPU doesn't really control. Um, what I can report on that is um, we try to receive one element per cycle and in fact, uh, straight one loads mm, after the SCARA core generated all the uh, needed addresses are handled that way. And the way it works, so the, we have the um, load bus that connects the SCARA core to the VPU that is 512 bits wide, so that in one cycle each lane can actually receive one vector elements. So with this, after some cycles, of course, we can uh, fulfill the pipeline and start operating on the received elements. Uh, the thing is this, that for tried one loads, we actually receive one element per cycle for each lane. Is there any arbitration at the output to decide which functional unit result gets written back to vector register file? Okay, yes, good question. So, so far, I think I didn't specify that. Uh, let me go back here. OK, 
Okay, so, so far, uh, since we have single port, we uh, kind of put the first instruction in the execution, since this is a very long um, pipeline in the sense that you have, for example, for the maximum vector length of, of 256, each lane will be operating on 32 elements. There is not really need of having multiple operations on the fly. So we actually use, don't have buffers related to the single functional unit. They share those. So this means that the first instruction starts reading. You put the elements in the buffer. The buffer are feeding the functional unit and you keep going this way. So after you, um, notify that you have these overlappable instructions and you have already completed the end, uh, the, sorry, you have already read all the operands of the previous instruction, then you read the one for the subsequent instruction, you put them in the buffer and you wait for, their, they actually wait for the return to be um, handled by the functional unit. So that's the way it works. Um, of course, we have, in order to check if instructions are uh, overlappable, we have to do a kind of um, initial decoding phase where we see, okay, this instruction can go after this one because this latency can actually match and you can uh, keep uh, feeding the pipeline at the, at the maximum uh, allowed through this initial decoding phase. Thank you. <laughs>